I'm Sarah Brain and I'm from the University of the West of England. Um, I'm going to stand over here actually. Um, and I'm a subject librarian for education, um, politics and linguistics there um, at the main French A campus. Um, so what I'm going to do um, for the next 15 minutes or so is just to talk to you a bit about how someone's impacted um, our information literacy training at UWE and there may be some things in there that, that have already been um, touched upon this morning. Um, it's based on, what I'm going to say is based on my own experiences, um, but also um, on those of some co other colleagues that I've spoken to um, at UWE. So, just to briefly say, I'm actually firstly going to show you what, what someone looks like on our library website, because I think that might be quite useful to do so that you can, can see it in context. Um, and then talk a bit uh, like math about the impact um, and also some of the challenges as well. So just to say that we've had someone um, since February 2012. So 12-13 has been our, our first full academic year with it. Um, and like um, has already been mentioned before, one of the main reasons for implementing someone was um, a desire for, from staff and students to be able to find information easily um, and have that sort of Google-like search experience. So if I just go to it. Okay. Um, so this is our library homepage. Um, and you can see we've got um, a link to the search box straight from there. So the first thing you'll notice is that we don't call it summon. Um, we call it library search, which I think others have done as well. Um, single search box. Um, it's, it's got about, for our subscriptions at UWE, there's, it's got a, it covers about 87% um, of our full text subscriptions that we have. Um, we've also got our library catalogue in it, so it is our library catalogue as well. Um, and our research repository is in there as well. <clears throat> we, when students search it, um, we decided to deliberately exclude some sources, um, and I think others have done this as well, so that includes newspaper um, results because the linking out to, to newspapers, particularly in Nexus, is, is not great. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yep, yeah, as others obviously know that as well. Um, and we've also excluded book reviews as well, which I don't know if others have done that too, because we found that that flooded um, the results and students got really excited when they found something relevant and then realised that it was just a book review. So we've excluded both of those, but they're not gone forever. They can add them back in if they want to into the search results. And something else to say as well um, is that our results from our abstracting and indexing databases will only come up on the search results if we have the full text available. I don't know if that's something else that other people have done as well, possibly. So it really is, for us, library search really is a full text um, database. And just so we don't have the database recommender switched on, um, because the recommendations that come up for us aren't necessarily that useful. Um, and then finally, um, just before I move on to the impact, I just wanted to show you um, what we've done on our subject web pages. I'll just go into education, because uh, that's one of my areas. Um, just to show you, again, others may have done this too, um, we just put a little asterisk next to um, the databases that are included in library search, just to give um, users more of an idea um, of what's in there. Um, yeah, so that, that's what we do there. Okay, so I'll go back to my presentation. So, some, some thoughts um, on the impact um, that it's had. Actually, my first bullet point's not, not on there. <laughs> so I'll just say it. Um, the first thing that I was hoping would appear on there is um, information literacy framework. Um, so definitely the introduction of someone acted as a catalyst for us to think about how we do our information literacy training. That's almost a given, really. Um, and one of the things that's come out of it as, is a framework um, relating to information literacy that 
um, applies from all levels, from undergraduate level one up to researchers that we've written um, um, in the library and adopted. Um, and it gives guidance on the types of skills um, that are needed um, at each level, um, depending on the student's, student or staff need and the kind of information um, they need to find. And within that, um, we do have, ref obviously, reference to Summon, um, because it could summon, as far as we're concerned, summon can be used in different ways depending on um, what information you need. Um, so that's it's kind of formed an integral part um, of our new information literacy framework. So my second point, which is the first one on my screen, is um, more of, on more of a practical level, which has already been mentioned. In library inductions, we don't we tend not to demonstrate it. Um, particularly uh, level one sessions on our French A campus. Um, yeah, we just usually let students loose on it um, and let them just use it. And one thing we found um, is because of the deep searching, um, it's great that students don't need to know at the search stage whether they're looking for a journal article or a journal title. They don't need to know the difference between those things, whereas they used to have to. Um, <clears throat> So it makes the search much simpler. I'm sure I'm saying things that you all already know and have experience. Um, but one, uh, two colleagues of mine, um, an example of this is two colleagues did three identical inductions for mature students. Um, in the first session, they did show someone. In the second one, they mentioned it, but didn't actually demonstrate it. Um, and then in the third one, they didn't even mention it. Um, they just talked about the library web pages. So they just didn't mention it at all. And they found that during the hands-on in all three sessions, um, the, the use of library search was no better or worse in any of the sessions. All of the students found it, probably because it's, it's there on our library homepage. And they all found results that they were happy with. So that was quite an, um, an interesting thing that they did um, there. Um, right, let me just try my yes. That's good. Um, as has already been mentioned as well, because we're not focusing on mechanics, we've got more time for critical evaluation of, of uh, resources. And that is actually a much more interesting thing, certainly from, from our point of view, and hopefully from the students' point of view, um, more interesting. Um, so getting them to think about um, the results that they find, because there are, they do get, um, there are a lot of results you can get in someone, and that can be a challenge. And getting them to think about what you know, the usual things, evaluating the sources, authority, currency, that kind of thing. And also, at that stage, they can start thinking about the format of, of what they found. Is it a journal article, that kind of thing. Um, so it, it really is um, an opportunity for us to um, get the students to start engaging their brains at a higher level in our sessions, rather than just kind of the mechanics of this is how you do X, Y, and Z. Um, so that's something that we found. Oh, there's the information that was the framework. <laughs> um, and then I just wanted, um, lastly on the impact, just to give an example of a subject area um, where they have actually um, redone all of their, their information is received from levels one to three based on Summon. Um, and this is our health and social care department. Um, Summon searches 80% of their resources, so it's a really good um, level of um, level of coverage for them. So at level one now, they only show some, and they don't show any native um, into uh, native databases. Um, level two, they do a refresher and then start looking at the native interface, and then level three um, is advanced searching. So you can so yeah, it, so so it's basically you've got some and pretty much always as the starting point, um, but level two and three they get to um, move on to other, other sources. Okay, so I move on to the challenges now, um, which I'm sure will be familiar um, to you. And um, so the first one is coverage in summon, which again has been alluded to already, is limited for some areas. Um, I've got I've highlighted law, um, but also um, creative industries as well, so art and fashion and that kind of area. Um, I actually spoke to my colleague um, who works in that area, and she she said that, that their training has actually been impacted much less um, because of that, 
because they still need to um, teach the native interfaces. Um, so it's that someone's had less of an impact in that respect um, on their training. Um, and it does raise an issue, a, an issue of that there, there probably is a perception that someone is a one-stop shop um, to finding resources, and, and we've got it there on our home page. Um, so that's a reasonable uh, perception to have. Um, but actually, as we know, the reality that there are quite that there are some databases that aren't included. And I think a challenge for users of, of Summon we found is knowing knowing what's included and what isn't. Um, and knowing at what point they need to stop using someone or, yeah, try someone, but then move on um, and trying other resources. And again, I think that's in our information literacy training, that's um, something that we've been really aware of. And that comes into the IL framework that we've written as well, kind of guidance on that. So the other thing um, related to that is um, we've actually found that our other databases that aren't included in some have much lower usage now. This academic year, the usage statistics has dropped um, significantly. <clears throat> um, so that's just another um, challenge that we've had. Um, are they more hidden now? I, I don't know. They, they may not be. Um, but I guess, again, it's just for us to... Um, yeah, to, to kind of say, yes, summon, but also... Um, not necessarily to the exclusion um, of all other resources. I mentioned the volume of results can be a challenge sometimes. We, we often get feedback um, on that, and particularly from um, academic staff, actually, I've had that feedback. Um, and we've had to do, we have done some kind of advocacy work um, in that area. So, for example, um, um, subject colleagues that I work with, some academics, I went to their, one of their subject meetings um, for the first 10 minutes and was able to actually show them, kind of, I actually did show them some and, and how to make the best use out of it. Because they want to do things like find out if we've got a particular print journal in the library, which most people probably don't want to know, but for them that was important. And actually it's not completely obvious how you do that when you first use library search. So kind of actually helping them um, to um, do that. <clears throat> and then we've also found that, um, um, that, just thinking briefly about filters, when we do the hands-on, well, we've done, um, not focus groups, we've actually done kind of test, user testing, um, but also when we um, actually observe students in our sessions, we sometimes notice that they don't often see those filters on the left-hand side. Um, whether or not we show them to them at the beginning, they often um, then don't go on to use them, not, not, certainly not when we're around anyway. Um, so it's interesting. It's like they are treating someone exactly like Google, which is kind of what we want, um, because it's one search box. Um, but actually, it summons not exactly like Google, it, it's a bit different. It's, it's got the limiters, it's got kind of more um, options for kind of advanced searching in that way. So it just leads to um, attention there, um, I guess, especially when we're kind of helping students to use it. Okay, and then the final thing is, um, which can be a challenge, um, is someone's agility, um, which is also a really good thing, um, but the fact that it's um, is updated very often, approximately every three weeks, I think, um, can often lead to changes in the search um, environment, um, which I'm sure others have found this as well. Um, so again, the challenge for us there is if we do plan any kind of detailed demonstrations of it, um, then just need to be aware of the fact that actually when you come to show it, there might be changes that, um, we, you know, that weren't there before. But again, it's just being able to adapt to this and, and maybe going back and not, not showing any kind of detailed um, demonstrations of it's another argument um, for, for not doing that. Okay, that's what I want to cover. So um, if anyone's got any questions. Hi. Uh, 
Did anyone else hear that comment? I'll just summarise it briefly. <laughs> um, just saying that, um, sorry, where did you say you were from? Uh, Neil from City University. Neil from City University London. Um, was just saying that um, the law librarians there, when um, they introduced Summon, um, was perhaps expecting um, it to not have a good reception. Um, but actually, they were pleased because they were, it meant that they were students were able to search kind of the kind of journal article aspect and the kind of social aspect of law, which was which is in summer, um, and then they could advise students to just to go elsewhere for kind of the more hardcore aspect, case study, um, case law, act, and that kind of thing. So they were actually able to make that split quite nicely um, in their um, kind of information literacy and probably. Yeah, that, that make, probably makes sense to the students as well. Any other questions? Um, it's just about the classics, uh, the slight tension. Yeah. Um, I just wonder if you think, um, I think we're now seeing students who think that they still got the because of the eBay and Amazon, there's still that sort of knowledge of classics used you know, in a lot of people. But, but do you think someone is having this? A little bit, of, you have to be a little bit of a slave to whatever it change, whatever changes. Yeah, it, it, say everybody starts using them mm -hmm. and develops mm -hmm. their research. You know, yeah. Kind of fine. Actually, it's got to sort of. Do you think it's got to sort of mirror that because that's what people become used to? I mean. Mm -hmm. Well, our database, the, those pages um, that link to the databases that list the, work, the databases for your subject and which ones are included are our second most used um, web pages in the, on the library website. Obviously, the first most used is, is library search, but yes, yeah, so they are well used. Yeah, I think it may well be, yeah. Can you tell whether that's used by students or academics or other librarians? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to go back and possibly not, actually. Okay.